Welcome to the Cosmic Collective Podcast. I'm your host and psychic medium, Mads, and in this community, we talk about all things spiritual awakening, higher consciousness, and unlocking the path back to your soul. Welcome to the Collective. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the podcast. Today's episode is honestly very interesting, in my personal opinion. If you're really into like numerology, angel numbers, and mathematics, you're going to like this. Um, It does, it's not math heavy. Don't worry for those of you who are like, I'm an arts person or I'm not into math at all. Don't worry. There's really like not any math that we're talking about, more or less. Um, But it's really, really interesting talking about life path numbers and how numerology works. So, A quick little overview, numerology is the building blocks, right, of the creation of the universe because through numerology, we then were able to develop the divine triangle from Pythagoras. We were able to develop calculus, things like that. Like the universe is built off of numbers. It's kind of an interesting sort of coding system. It's very, very cool, especially when we look at it from higher perspectives like the sixth and ninth dimensions but specifically in numerology there are five very important numbers um, that you will come across in your numeric makeup and we can go over those five really quickly but today we're focusing on the life path number so there's your life path number your soul urge number your destiny number and your outer personality number And oftentimes people will also take a look at their birthday number. And all of these numbers give a lot of interesting information about your identity, your true intentions, where you want to have impact in life, your blueprint of your potential, your soul's personal history in terms of accomplishments and how it works in this physical realm, your personality, how you are perceived outwardly, So it's really, really cool to look at. Most people are familiar with their life path number, but I would say that your life path number, your soul number, and your destiny number are the top three most important of the five. But today we're going to be talking about the life path number. So the life path number is all about your identity, your strengths, your weaknesses, your talents, and your ambitions in this life. Now, I do have to say that just because you're going to hear these qualities today, the needs for improvement, the relationship compatibilities, and career ideas, it's really important that if something doesn't resonate, that you don't overthink it because this is just one part of a very large puzzle, right? Like if I were to give someone a comprehensive makeup and understanding of their soul's incarnation i would use all of their numerology i would use their birth chart their soul contract and i would also look at their human design type which interestingly enough i've been doing a lot of soul contract readings lately and i've noticed that depending on the planetary placements in someone's soul contract i can tell if they're a projector manifesting generator reflector things like that which is just the coolest thing that there's literally indicators for it in the chart so anywho that's besides the point but just know that this life path number is a very 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 small portion of who you are so if something doesn't resonate don't overthink it take what resonates and leave the rest now I did a lot of research for all of this I wanted to make sure that I understood everything in the highest capacity that I could. So we're breaking up each of the numbers into four categories. And I'm going to do each number all at once. And we're going to be covering the qualities of the life path number, where they need to improve or where they might find their wounded energy coming through, their relationships, and what their career might look like. Now, however, with career... Take it especially with a grain of salt for life path numbers. I personally found mine to be resonant, but my life path number and my soul urge number are the same. So it made sense. But with your career, you're going to want to look at your soul urge number, also known as your destiny number, because that's also going to have a lot of insights on 
what you're planning on doing in this life and what you would ideally um, succeed in and be fulfilled by. Just like your midhaven, the MC line in astrology will also kind of give you the indicators of what that might look like. So take everything as it resonates. We're going to jump into it. It's likely going to be a longer episode. You obviously don't have to listen to every single one of the numbers. So if you want to just listen to yours, then I'll tell you how to figure out what your number is in just a moment. But for those of you who are going to stick through this whole episode, it's always super fun to see what the people around you's life path numbers are and like how that works in your guys relationship dynamics and things like that. So you find your life path number by adding up all the digits of your birthday. So you take the numeric day, you take the number of the month and you take the numbers of the year and you separate them all to single digits. So let's say you're born June 6th, 2022. Then you will add six that's actually that's kind of funny (laughs) June 6th 2022 is 666 (laughs) oh someone's gonna have a heyday with that um yeah so anyway maybe let's pick a different number let's say you're born on June 15th 2022 you would take six plus one plus five plus two plus two plus two these zeros are null so you don't have to do that and the numbers the number that you would get at the end, you make sure that's a single digit as well. So that would be, I'm doing quick mental math here. June 15th, 2022 would be 6, 6, 12 plus 7 would be 19. 7 plus 2 is 9. So 19 would then be 1 plus 9, which would be 10, which would be 1 because the 0 is null. So it would be a life path number 1. So You can sort that out um, by writing that down and using your calculator or you can do the quick mental math like I did. But let's jump into the life path numbers and who they are, what they're like and characteristics that you might have through these numbers. All right, life path number one. Your archetype is the leader. So some of the qualities that you're going to possess are being a sort of trailblazer or pioneer in whatever field that you go into and honestly in probably the majority of the areas in your life you're going to be seen as this person you're more than likely going to have a type a personality you're really going to take charge might be a little hot-headed especially if you have some aries placements um but definitely the go-getter the leader the, the person who is taking initiative and getting things done You also like to march to the beat of your own drum. You really don't like being told what to do. People often haven't taken the paths that you have or the path that you intend to take or at least not in the way that you intend to take it. So you really don't take much advice from people and even if you do, you're still going to take their advice and apply it in your own unique way. You're very determined and driven, authoritative, very authentic, independent, outgoing, and you're also very fiercely protective over the ones that you love. Now, your room for improvement or how you might express yourself when you're in deep wounded ego expression is you might be very conceited and condescending, so be careful with that. Confidence is great, but superiority is not. You will struggle with perfectionism when you're in your wounding. So it's important to remember that perfection is in the process, not the outcome. And by perfection being in the process, it means anything that you do, any step you take to get closer and closer to your goals, you're being perfect in that sense because you're working towards being a better version of yourself. You might also struggle with workaholism. So make sure that you're really finding ways to create a good life work balance, not work life balance, but life work balance. You're here to live life, not to just work. You might be a little egotistical, arrogant, and self centered. So just make sure that, you know, you really nip those superiority complexes in the butt if you find that you struggle with these and you're feeling this way. And remember that you're no better than anyone else. And know that that also means that no one else is better than you. We're all just here having a human experience, doing the best that we can, evolving, learning what our soul has come, has put us on this earth to learn, I should say. 
not come here to learn. But yeah, I guess our soul has come here to learn stuff. So just remember that. In relationships, you definitely like to be in charge. So whether you're male, female, however your sex or gender is expressed, you are wearing the pants in this relationship. You also don't like to compromise though. So this is an area in your makeup where you're either going to want someone who likes when other people make decisions or if you are in a relationship with someone or you're collaborating with someone who is the same way as you, you both don't like to make compromise, you need to figure out a way where both of you can get what you want without compromising or with very minimal compromising. That being said, life path ones, you're very compatible with life paths three, five, and six. Not to say that you can't date or have successful relationships with other numeric life path numbers. I've actually seen it before. I've seen really great relationships with people who technically in their life path numbers wouldn't really be a good match. It just means that you're going to go through a little bit more challenges with the other numbers in the sense of you might need to learn to compromise. You might need to communicate more. You might need to take a little bit of a back seat once in a while. As where with life paths three, five, and six, your authoritative leading independent energy is going to excel here. Now with career, again, always look at your destiny number because that will very much help with this. But in terms of your life path number, life path number one, you're going to be really great with technology. So anything that involves either working on tech, through tech, creating tech, coding, whatever it is, you're going to be really good at it. You will prefer to work alone. So entrepreneurship or freelance contract roles are all really good. They're really aligned for you. You're definitely not going to want to work the nine to five because you don't like being told what to do. So um, definitely going down that self-employed route or contract role will be great for you. The other thing is that you also don't like being paid for time worked. You want to be paid for work achieved, which I'm right there with you. I'm an entrepreneur myself. So definitely make sure that you know how to charge for your worth and what you are providing and you know, don't feel bad for not focusing on the time that goes into it. It's about what it's the, it's about deliverables, right? It's about the effect that you make, the impact you have and the deliverables you're able to provide, um, whom, whomever your client is. So keep that in mind. Some careers that might interest or fulfill you as a life path one are teaching politics, design, photography, architecture, engineering, freelancing, writing, sports coaching, and again, any entrepreneurial pursuits. So that is life path number one. Let's move on to life path number two. All right, life path number two. Your archetype is the peacemaker. And this makes a lot of sense when we look at numerology with two being all about like inner balance. So here are your qualities. Number two, you have an us mentality. As where number one has the leader I mentality, you have an us mentality. You're very relationships and partnerships focused. You're empathetic and incredibly sensitive to those around you, which makes you a really good mediator, really helpful on solving problems, whether it's with you and someone else or just for other people, helping them come to resolution. You're very patient, definitely introverted, definitely introverted. You're a great listener. You want to bring balance and harmony to everything in life, relationships, people, the ecosystem, careers, finances, you just want balance and harmony with all of it. You're very, very loyal and you also are intuitive. However, you see things in binary opposites. So it's not an objective intuition. It's more of a moral compass. It's more of a a subjective intuition. And you really will want to be careful of seeing things in such a black and white kind of reality. And this kind of leaks into your need for improvement, the areas that you might express when you're in your wounded ego. So seeing things, seeing things, the world, people in a binary or dualistic way is not really going to get you anywhere. Everything is gray at the end of the day. Things are not black and white. Everything is on the spectrum of gray. And we see that with every spectrum, right? Love and hate are two polar ends of the same spectrum. It's really important for you to pay attention to what's in between the two pole ends of something that's going on of any given situation, person, place, event, thing, belief system, moral compass, anything like that. So you're encouraged to really 
um, get into a more unified state of understanding, especially from a higher perspective as you mature in life. You can be overly emotional. So this could be emotionally reactive, emotionally invested. But it's really, really important that you learn how to regulate that within yourself. Again, these are all your areas like for improvement and uh, where you might express yourself or how you might express yourself in your wounded ego. So it's always good to know what needs to be worked on so that you can continue evolving, right? Moving out of one pole end into a higher part of the other pole. You might also interfere in other people's situations um, and it's kind of a sense of deflection for you. You don't have to deal with yourself whenever you're dealing with other people, so be mindful of that. You might be a people pleaser, struggle standing up for yourself. And because you struggle with standing up for yourself and people pleasing, you tend to be a little passive aggressive. So just face things head on. Just face things head on. Stand up for what you believe in. Stand up for yourself. And you'll see that your relationship with yourself even gets a lot stronger there because you're not willing to tolerate shit from people. You have strong boundaries. Now, in relationships, number two, you're a true romantic And you firmly believe in happily ever after. Like you are a romantic at heart. You love love stories. And most importantly, you love your own love story. You're more than happy to compromise and talk through your problems in your relationship. And because of that, you need someone who is also a really good communicator. However, in this communication, you need to get better. You need to get better. You, you, listen to this carefully. You need to get better at voicing your concerns and your needs. So if your needs are not being provided for, but your partners are, you need to speak up about that. And this is kind of where that passive aggressiveness might come along because your needs aren't getting met. You need to talk about them too. So if you appreciate good communication, you also need to be a good communicator. And you're most compatible with life paths number six, eight, or nine. Again, this doesn't mean that you can't have beautiful, successful relationships with another life path number, but your most easy compatible relationship will be with six, eight, or nine. In terms of your career, you're really adaptable in the sense of figuring out what people's needs are on a team, what you need to do to get a a job well done. And again, you're really involved with that desire for peace, harmony, and balance in all areas of life. So these will be really good areas to look into work for. But specific professions might be a lawyer, a politician, being a healer of some sort, whether that's Western or Eastern medicine, um, or anything in the creative fields, because it might be a really good way for you to express your emotions or even contrast the polarity of your binary perspective of the world. And that is a life path number two. All right, life path number three. Your archetype is the creative which makes a lot of sense whenever you think of the numerology, even in tarot, what the number three cards represent. And three being the divine feminine number. So very creative, very intuitive. Your qualities are that you can be exceptionally gifted. This will usually be somewhere within the arts and within one particular field of being. But again, very gifted. You tend to see the good in everything. This archetype kind of has this sort of like childlike view of the world, which is honestly, I think we need more of it in the, in, in the world. So good on you for it. You have an abundance of creative ideas. You tend to self express through music, poetry, dance, or the fine arts. You're very independent. You're playful and not too serious. You have a very high level of sociability and you tend to be a bit of a chatterbox. You're definitely destined in this life for art, love, and romance. You're very in tune with your feelings. You're slow to anger, quick to forgive, and you're quite funny. And You have a great sense of humor. Where you might need to improve whenever you're in a wounded ego expression is diving into too many things at once and not like finishing things that you start. Gossiping, divulging other people's secrets. Not cool, dude. Like, why are you doing that? Filter things. You can be a bit scatterbrained, um, trying to find like constant guidance from the outside world. And so you're really encouraged to tap into your intuition and your inner compass more to make decisions. You might feel restless. And because of this, again, this has to do with like 
really quieting the mind and getting to know yourself without the opinions and guidance of others. But this restlessness and this inner battle, I guess, of not really quieting your mind down might actually lead you to addictions. Also, if you're not able to creatively express yourself, you might struggle with addiction as well. You can be a little bit irresponsible whenever you're in your wounded expression. You don't really care about your impact on people or how your words affect people or anything like that. So that's something to look out for. You can also be moody and non-communicative. So if you're in a bad mood and you're not talking to the person who put you in a bad mood or triggered you to be in a bad mood and you're not communicating it, then you can't really expect resolution. Um, You can't expect people to cater to you just because you don't feel like opening up and you know, talking about things. So keep in mind whenever you notice yourself in that kind of pattern to figure out why you're not communicating, why you're trying to get people to give you all the answers and solutions that you're looking for. You've got to put the effort into. In relationships, you do super, super well with Life Paths 5 just because they're really, really adventurous and just as positive as you are. However, you'd probably be a really great match with a seven or a one as well because the seven is very intuitive and thoughtful and can help stimulate your creativity. And the one is going to need a lot of individuality as just as much as you are so that you can creatively express. And your biggest need in relationships is to be an individual within the relationship. You don't want to be defined by your relationship. So that will be your biggest quality in a relationship. In terms of career, you need a career that is engaged and interesting. You're going to be terrible with a nine to five. It's really not going to work for you. And it might actually put you into that like moody, depressive, non-communicative, restless, addictive kind of scatterbrained energy. So the breath, the best careers for you um, involve communication and creativity. So anything in those domains will be amazing for you. But specifically domains where you can self-express and create a product from that will be the best for you. So filmmaking, acting, painting, photography, designing, writing, journalism. And then of course there's like other areas that will also work for you that might be more representative of a different side of your personality, which would be law, teaching, counseling, but also like screenwriting, dancing, sculpting, fashion, just the whole bunch of like slew of things that you could do. And you might actually find that you kind of flip flop back and forth between what you want to do until you find something that really sticks for you that allows you to really fully self-express and feel fulfilled with that. So that is a life path number three. Life path number four, your archetype is the foundation builder, which Again, with tarot and numerology being the representative of the divine masculine makes so much sense. Your qualities are that you're very down to earth. You're functional and practical. Justice and honest are attributes that you honor the most about yourselves. You will always be honest and you will always seek what is just. You tend to be a realist, but in a really positive way. Like you just want to do everything that will make the world a better place. Like as much as you can to make this place better than how you found it. You're very hardworking, highly organized, knowledgeable, disciplined, very dependable. People can always rely on you. Again, you're very ethical and fair, which kind of comes into the honest and just part. You value comfort and stability, and you tend to approach romance a little bit more quietly, a little bit more softly and subtly. But the one thing is that you need to remember to have fun and let loose. You can be a little bit too practical and too functional and too purposeful. Like you just need to like let loose and have fun sometimes. So let's get into your need for improvement. So in your wounded ego expression, you might be overly cautious and too hard on other people who aren't like you. You might be a little weary of them because they don't see the world the way that you do. They don't act in the world like you do. But that's something that you need to recognize as being a beautiful part of, you know, being human, being in this earth experience. You also might be a little dull, frugal, intolerant, close-minded, stubborn, again, too serious, needing to let loose and have fun. You might also be rude and standoffish. So whenever you find yourself in these energies, it's really important that you self-reflect and you self-evaluate so that you can understand why you're feeling that way and why you're projecting your emotions outwardly rather than trying to find resolution internally. 
in terms of relationships, again, you're going to take a very quiet approach to romance. You're just very gentle with it is kind of how it comes across. But you're a very, very loyal partner. However, interestingly enough, you don't buy into the idea that there is the one out there. You're probably the kind of person who believes soulmates are made, not found, which personally I don't fully disagree with you. I'm 50-50 on that one. I think we find our soulmates, but we have to choose to make it work with particular ones. So I get your point of view. But as a four, um, you might also find that you're afraid to find yourself, that you can't find yourself outside of another And so this might lead you to be very codependent in relationships or staying with the wrong partner just to get your needs met. So a big life lesson for you is going to be realizing that you can give yourself everything you've ever wanted, emotionally, mentally, physically, spiritually. You need to find that within yourself before finding your life partner or else you're just going to be in like a codependent, toxic kind of mess. You're best matched with ones, sevens, and eights in life path numbers. I would say you'd probably really, really do well with a one or an eight. Seven is going to be very, very, very spiritual. They're going to be able to like balance to your needs, but you might not 100% be able to balance to theirs. However, you will be very grounding for them. So I guess it'll all depend on the seven. But I would definitely say like ones and eights will be your biggest match. Now in terms of career, you are the worker bees of business. So anything that has to do with running a business, you're the go-to guy. Like you're it. The guy or gal. Whomever. You're very committed and dependable. You have a very strong work ethic. And you can do pretty much anything you set your mind to, which is really honestly impressive. You are also very methodical and systematic at solving problems. So working in any sort of field that has to do with problem solving is going to be really, really, really prosperous for you. Some of these careers might include event planning, academia, project management, banking, carpentry, fundraising, landscaping, publishing, architecture, engineering, accounting, and campaign management, which I wonder what campaign, I think campaign management is like politics and things like that, which is interesting. And that is life path number four. All right, life path number five. I would say we're at the halfway point, but you know, we've got the master numbers too, so we're almost there. Life path number five, your archetype is the adventurer, which is honestly so interesting. It makes sense as to why you'd be compatible with a number one archetype. But your qualities are that you crave security, but the idea of settling down to you is absolutely dreadful. So interesting dichotomy. You're very outgoing and excited by life. You're a quick learner. Tend to be a little bit hyperactive, but you're playful. You're always looking for something new. You're very, very curious. You always want to try new things, whether it's food, places, people, (laughs) which do that ethically, um, or things. You're always looking for something new. You love travel. You're all about freedom. You tend to be a bit of an adrenaline junkie. You you chase highs and you're a risk taker, which we'll get into that with your need of improvement because that can go on the polar ends of the spectrum. You're also not going to settle in life. Like You absolutely refuse to settle, and I find that super fucking impressive. And you're a really great communicator, which is just beautiful, especially if you're going to be so outgoing and so curious about life. It's great that you're able to express yourself and communicate effectively. However, in your wounded ego, this is how you might express yourself. You might do too many half jobs. You start something, you don't finish it. Similar to a three, you're going to start something and not finish it. So be careful with that. You also might become self-absorbed, impulsive, quick-tempered, impatient, and you're going to be overly focused on instant gratification. It's like you don't want to take the time to work through things. You don't want to take the time to get to know yourself. You don't want to take time to figure out what it is that you actually need. So you stuff it down and then you project out whatever is going on within you that you refuse to acknowledge. So be aware of that. This can also relate to drug use and addiction. So if you are in your wounded ego and you're not dealing with it, you're very, very prone to addictions and reckless drug use to the point of overdosing so be very careful with that you can also be vain irresponsible inconsiderate and unfocused so all of these things are to say that if you're finding yourself expressing in this way you really just need to sit down with yourself and like have an honest conversation with yourself like you're a great communicator but you need to learn how to communicate with yourself inside of you inside of your mind so again these are just like 
areas of improvement in your wounded ego expression and your qualities are your highest expression. So definitely tap into those a little bit more. In relationships, again, you're not going to settle and being tied down is kind of dreadful to you. So you might take longer to settle down. You might be very picky about who you even consider to settle down with, which by all means is honestly a good thing. Your best partner is a life path three. In all honesty, like that is the best life path number for you, but the other potentials are one and seven. You will, however, steer clear of relationships um, until later in life. Again, just kind of reiterating that fact. You really don't like to settle down. However, I know a life path five personally, and they settle down really early in life and they're very, very happy. So, and actually they're not with a three, one or a seven. So you can make it work. I think it just needs to be the right person for you. Like you're really not gonna, you're not gonna settle. You're not gonna settle. I don't blame you. Now in terms of career, you really do not thrive in the nine to five. Like it's just not it. It's gonna lead to all those addictions and those more need for improvement kind of traits. You're also gonna find that you have a fleeting passion. So you might jump from job to job to job to job because you are content with one thing one day and the next day you could not be fucking bothered. So you might be someone who has a hard time holding down a job or staying in one job for a long period of time. However, you're incredibly intelligent. You're very versatile and very adaptable in situations. So here are the careers that might actually work really good for you that you might find give you enough stimulus and enough possibility and different ways to express yourself that you don't get sick of them. Travel, marketing, teaching, nature, photography, tour or adventure excursions, which you're the only one who I would say is great for that role, motivational speaking, research, writing, filmmaking, and coaching. So these are all different areas of work that you're, it's going to be very versatile every day, which is going to work really well with your nature. And that is a life path number five. All right, life path number six. Your archetype is the nurturer, which if you look in the tarot, it makes a lot of sense. In numerology, actually I could see it with numerology too. I think I see it more of like an independent number in numerology, but definitely in tarot, you're the nurturer 100% and that's how you're expressed in this archetype. Your qualities are going to be that you're very family oriented, you're a great listener, you're very artistic, creative, responsible, you feel a sense of responsibility for the ones that you love and because of that you have very strong family bonds. You find beauty in hidden places, like you see beauty in things that other people would see as ordinary, which is such a beautiful quality about you. However, you need to remember to look after yourself because you're very selfless, tolerant, generous, and loyal but you need to also prioritize those things for yourself rather than just giving them outwardly to others you're also very honest very peaceful and very sympathetic which are just it's such a nurturing maternal kind of energy the six i it's so calming and soothing however in your wounded ego expression your areas of improvement or your traits for improvement will be being critical of others becoming overly controlling, unpractical, hypocritical, shallow, submissive, easily stressed, and prone to having a superiority complex, which is honestly kind of in line. It reminds me of the Six of Wands in the reverse because the Six of Wands in reverse in tarot talks about being very egotistical and it kind of gives like those kind of like narcissistic undertones, not saying that if you have a life path number six, you're a narcissist. That's completely irrelevant of any of these numbers so don't take offense to that Um, but these kinds of egoic expressions will be in that kind of undertone so just be aware that that's a possibility and it's often going to come from the fact that you're not taking care of yourself you're going to feel these ways whenever you're not prioritizing yourself so I need to remind you your cup your energy, your emotions need to be positively overflowing before you can even think about giving it to someone else. If your cup is just filled to the top, but it's not overflowing, when you give to people, your your water is being taken from your cup, right? If we go back to these like water cup analogies that I love to use, you need to make sure your cup is overflowing like a faucet. 
And that's whenever you're really going to feel like you've prioritized yourself and you have extra to give to people. So just remember that. In relationships, you can have kind of like this Cancerian energy of being a mother to your partners, which is not good for you or your partner. So really be aware of that. You're not here to mother your your partners and be the mother in relationships. You're here to be an equal, a partner, a friend, a lover. So that's something that you'll definitely want to work on. And often I find that kind of Cancerian energy, no offense to my Cancers, by the way, either, um, but it often comes from like not taking care of yourself. So you feel like you have to fix other people, fix yourself before you fix other people, right? Like it's not your job to fix them and mother them. It's your job to fix you and mother you. Great life path numbers for you are one, two, nine, and even six. But I would say probably more like one, two, and nine because I feel like a six and a six might just be like there's no like assertion in there. I feel like you'd do so well with a life path number one. If you want someone who's like a go-getter who's going to be assertive and like take initiative with you, you want a one. If you want someone who's like a little bit more passive, you want a two. And if you want someone who's kind of both, you want the nine. Now, in terms of career, you're very successful in business. You have really great leadership. So the roles that involve you being a leader are going to be really great because you tend to be able to intuitively match the needs of employees and coworkers. And you're really great at motivating other people. So working as like a managerial role or running a business will be great for you. Anywhere that you can take on responsibility is where you're going to be most fulfilled. So best career titles for you would be being a CEO of a multinational company or a CEO of any kind of company, working for a small nonprofit organization. Honestly, being a stay-at-home parent is also something that we see a lot of sixes excel in and enjoy. You might also want to work in childcare as a support worker, a life coach, humanitarian, environmentalist, in hospitality, a human or animal rights advocate, a healer, a nanny, an engineer, a baker, or a chef. So you really have like opportunities in several different fields. So I think that that's really interesting and very, very diverse with your numeric makeup. And that is a life path six. All right, life path number seven. Your archetype is the seeker. And your number is very spiritual in numerology. So it's going to be quite interesting. Your qualities are that you're very intelligent and analytical. You're always wanting to learn something. And you're a truth seeker, which is why your archetype is the seeker. You want to find the higher truth in everything. You're very in touch with nature. You are extremely spiritual and highly, highly, highly intuitive. You often receive your wisdom, your information, your data from your intuitive channel. You don't pay any attention to what others think of you. You can be a little bit eccentric, which doesn't necessarily have to be a negative thing. You have quick wit and charm. You're very focused on uncovering the mysteries of life, which leads you to be very philosophical. You're focused on those true, deeper meanings of everything in both the physical reality and the metaphysical world. You are able to take your problem solving, you're very intellectual at problem solving, and you're able to turn that into theoretical knowledge so that you can create practical solutions for other people. You're very creative, highly, highly sensitive, you need a lot of quiet time and like quiet environments. You're someone who's very prone to not like environments that are overstimulating or chaotic. It takes someone very special to understand you as a seven, but you're also very keen to share your wisdom with other people. You will guard your personal life though. So as much as you share your wisdom, you're very, very private in your personal life. And you often like to take long stretches of solitude. And that really helps your like intuitive, spiritual nature and your need for quiet time. Your need for improvement, however, when you're in a wounded expression, whenever you're in that egoic mindset, is firstly not to become a hermit or a lone wolf. You don't have to be afraid of the world. You can go out there and live and still have your quiet time. You don't need to completely close out. You are here having a human experience. You might, you might also come off as or be a bit condescending and selfish because you're seeing things from a perspective that maybe the people around you won't understand and you explain things in such an intellectual way that sometimes you just need to meet people on their level so that they don't feel like they're being talked down to or talked at but they're being spoken with 
You might also come off as selfish because of your needs for quiet time and how you process things more individually rather than collaboratively. So pay attention to that. People might also find that you're out of touch with reality, but you'll know in the truth of it that you're more in touch with the reality that they can't see and that's okay. You do need to learn how to open up to those that you can truly trust though and to work on your emotional intimacy. You don't have to open up to everyone. You can choose like one or two people in this life that you open up to, but you need to open up to people that you truly trust and that you are okay with being vulnerable with. It's really going to help you understand yourself and this human experience better. And it's also going to connect you to humanity a little bit more. In relationships, you're very loyal, but you do need someone who's mature and who is going to challenge you intellectually because you want freedom, you want time to contemplate, and you want someone who's going to give you like a sentence or a quote that will allow you to like brood on it for a couple of days and come up with your own philosophical understanding. You're very much similar to like the ninth house or Sagittarius in astrology. The life path numbers that you'd be most compatible with are ones, threes, fours, fives, and sevens, depending on what you're really looking for in a partner. So if you're looking for someone to take charge, be adventurous and individual, you might want a one. If you're looking for someone who's spontaneous and creative, you'll want a three. If you're looking for someone who's grounded, you're going to want a four. And if you're looking for someone who is kind of all of those things all over the place, you're going to want a five. And if you want someone who's like yourself, you'll just want to date a seven. In terms of career, you're very, very detail oriented and you have a brilliant mind and you need to put it to good use. So different career paths that you'll want to look into or you might be interested in are being a surgeon, honestly, very interesting, but being a surgeon would definitely be up there with your intellectual capacity. Being a scientist, a researcher, an analyst, a psychiatrist, a detective, writing, doing something that is connected to the spiritual realm. So being a spiritual leader, a spiritual healer, or something along those lines and public speaking. And that is a life path seven. We're almost there guys. All right. Life path number eight, the number of abundance. Life path number eight, your archetype is the boss, which honestly makes a lot of sense. Your qualities are that you're well-respected, you're a true commander, you're resilient, you're great at making money, also great at dealing with conflict, you're very action-oriented, wonderful with management, you're a natural, respected leader, your will, skill, wisdom often lead you to wild amounts of success in your career, like literally wild. Eights make insane amounts of money. It makes sense because eight is all about abundance, but it's insane. Your language is in the material world. You understand things that are material a lot more than you're going to understand what's spiritual. And you are quite an inspiration when it comes to success. However, your room for improvement, where you might be if you're in a little bit of a wounded ego expression, is being too proud to take advice, which we've all been there. The ego says, I already know what I need. I know what I need to do. I've got it. But just take the advice. Sometimes ask for help. It's okay. You might... Be a little over controlling, especially when it comes to getting your work done with employees and things like that. So make sure that you're leading your team, but you're also being a collaborative team member. You have to be careful to not be too domineering in relationships. You do have such a like type A leader boss energy that sometimes it's important in relationships to make sure that you're leveling with people. And that you're able to cooperate because sometimes you can be a little bit too stubborn and unwilling to cooperate. So you just want to pay attention to that as well if you're in an egoic expression. Now in terms of relationships, you're going to focus on your career first. If you're not successful, you don't give a shit about manifesting love. Like you need a successful career before anything. You might want to tone down your directness in your relationships depending on the energy and the circumstances. So being direct is great. It gets you what you want. It's clear. It's effective. It's communicative. It's wonderful. But there are times when you just need to be a little bit more sensitive, especially in emotional matters that involve the heart. You're definitely going to wear the pants in the relationship. No doubt about that. Like you're wearing the pants. It doesn't matter who you're dating. You're wearing the pants. 
You do need to learn that relationships are built on cooperation though. So as much as you want to wear the pants and you will wear the pants, you still need to, again, level with your partner. And you're best matched with life paths number two, four, six, and eight yourself. Which, let me know if you're a life path eight and you're dating a number eight because I want to know how that works. If you're both wearing the pants, if you're both like like steadfast in who you are and don't always like to cooperate, I wonder how that works. But I feel like in a really strong alignment, I feel like it actually makes a pretty strong power couple. And then... In terms of career life path number eight, you have a drive and leadership skills and wisdom to thrive in the business domain. Like there is unparalleled potential here. Now, for those of you who aren't like a life path number eight, don't think that this means that you like can't tap into insane amounts of potential. Potential is limitless always. But eights will have a natural ability to get there either quickly or more effectively than other life path numbers or with just a little bit more ease. So in all honesty, number eight, whatever you set your mind to in career, you're going to see success with. But specific fields that you'll want to look into are finance, business, politics, law, influence in social or community settings, and entrepreneurship. Honestly, I feel like eights would be really great influencers, like kind of a mood. So that is the life path number eight. All right. Life path number nine, the final number in numerology, but we are going to go through the master numbers. Number nine, your archetype is the humanitarian, which is just such a beautiful, all-encompassing understanding of who you are. Your qualities are being community-oriented. You have a huge focus on service. That is the most important thing to you in this life. You are very compassionate, highly charismatic, and you contain all of the wisdom of other life paths. So you're very focused on the bigger picture and you want to help in any way that you can. Like however you can, wherever you can, you want to help. You're known as the Good Samaritan. You're very socially conscious, emotionally and spiritually wise. You have deep concern for injustices. And you have this combination of like being a visionary, having a lot of drive and commitment. So you're really able to make your goals happen very quickly. Or maybe not necessarily quickly that you might take your time with them, but you're going to be very effective in the outcome. Now, in terms of need for improvement, where you might find yourself and your wounded ego expression is letting others take advantage of you, falling into depression or martyrdom, being indecisive, having emotional mood swings, and being oversensitive. So these are all indicators if you're feeling these ways that you just need a little bit more emotional tending to and more time kind of introspecting and really sorting out, you know, why you're struggling in that sense. In terms of relationships, you have ethical pursuits. Um, So you're going to want to really focus on if a relationship is like an ethical decision for you at that time. So basically to say, if you feel like you're doing with too much inner turmoil and like inner shit, you're not going to feel like it's ethical to get into a relationship. So you're going to put your ethics ahead of relationships. You're also going to put your service to humanity um, above relationships or before relationships. So you might settle down later in life. However, you are very romantic But you're also naive in love. Like you can kind of be a little bit aloof to relationships. So it's really important that you don't let people take advantage of you. Like you're wise enough to know that like to not to to know better. I don't want to say it like that. But you're wise enough to know what's right and what's wrong. So apply that same ethics that you have to your partners. You require ample freedom. And you're very stubborn and difficult to change. So if anyone comes into a relationship and they try changing you, you're not having it. But also, like, don't let them change you either, right? Like, stand up for yourself. In terms of life path numbers that you would be compatible with, it's numbers 1, 2, 3, and 6. And for career life path number 9, you're going to be, just like the 8, you're going to be successful in anything that you put your mind to. However, you're either going to be drawn to the arts or public service. So... Politics, law, teaching, nursing, interior design, photography, whatever area makes most sense to you is more of a heart fulfilling journey for you is going to make sense. But you're also the number, the only number also 
that is likely to have a job that fulfills your need for financial security and then live your like sole purpose or your passion on the side. Not to say that you have to go about it, but if that's the only way that you get to live your passion in this life and your service to humanity, like you will do that. Like you don't mind. And I think that that's really beautiful. Like nothing is going to stop you from having your service. And I love that. And that's a life path number nine. All right, now we're getting into the master numbers. So master number 11 in life path numbers, your archetype is the intuitive, which makes sense if you listen to the master number podcast, the quick little 10 minute episode. Your qualities are that you're highly intuitive, very psychic. So people are often going to think that you're kind of aloof in life because you just have such a big focus on the spiritual side of life. You have a deep understanding of metaphysical matters. And you often have like one foot in this reality and one foot in another dimension. So very Piscean kind of energy here. You're very introspective. So you can come off as introverted and shy and chances are you are introverted and shy. But you're very inspiring to others despite how aloof they may perceive you to be. There is a kind of like awe that you give off with that. You tend to be a, a late bloomer in life. So things might not come early in life whether that's career success love or financial security that might come later in your life but when it does it's going to be very fulfilling you tend to feel like you don't fit in anywhere you're not meant to you're here having a a spiritual experience in this human body and you're meant to kind of tap into that more spiritual side of things you're also very cooperative sensitive and intellectual however your room for improvement if you're in a wounded ego expression is going to be to not be so self-critical and self-conscious. Like you just need to love yourself and realize that you're doing the best that you can. You might be overly self-reflective and that can cause you to be prone to depression and anxiety. anxiety. So just like sometimes it's okay to not think. Sometimes it's okay to not philosophize. I say that as a Sagittarius. It's okay to not philosophize everything in every moment of every day. You got to be human. And because of these energies and how spiritual you are, if you're not able to tap into your spiritual side, you will become, not you will, but you have the possibility of becoming prone to addiction as well. In relationships, you're a natural peacemaker. Like you're willing to compromise in a relationship. You just value companionship. You have a good sense of humor. You're very faithful. Loyalty and commitment are going to be important qualities to you um, from a partner. You're also going to need your own space though because you're in, you're like one foot in, one foot out of this reality. So you're definitely going to need your own space and some time to like self-reflect and contemplate and things like that. You can also be revengeful when you're hurt or revengeful. How do you say it? Revenge, revengeful? Yeah, you could be revengeful whenever you're hurt. So definitely uh, reflect more before you make any revengeful decisions. Uh, you're most compatible with twos, sixes, and eights. And in terms of career, the thing is with you 11, your self-doubt and your fear can distract you from your vision entirely. You have natural healing abilities and your purpose is to heal humanity. You just need to believe that you can do it. So stop getting distracted by your fears. If, it doesn't, if the thought doesn't come from love, it's not serving you. Come from thoughts of love. Professions that you might go into are like counseling, massage, musician, artist, writer, medicine, teaching, ministry, international relations and even interpreting which I think is like so I think that's part of intuition right whenever you're interpreting for someone like language wise I feel like there's such an intuitive energy that comes from that with like conveying emotions and things like that so super super cool 11 and that is your life path number and life path 22 your archetype is the master teacher your qualities are also seen as being similar to the life path number four but you share knowledge in a way that others can easily understand it. You also can build realities, again, kind of like we talked about in the Master Numbers podcast, you build realities from like the wildest dreams and you also encourage others to do the same. Boredom, your worst enemy. Like you don't want to see a Life Path 22 being bored. It's just not, it's not a good time. You're a visionary, but you're practical with it. So you're brimming with potential You're also an intuitive and an idealist. So you basically can use all your gifts of practicality and like visionary to literally manifest whatever you want, like materially create the world you want to live in. If you don't use your gifts to do that, to enact and create your wildest dreams, you're going to find yourself feeling really aimless in this life. 
In terms of your need for improvement and how your wounded ego might express itself is being controlling, manipulative, inflexible, and a workaholic. So this is kind of that like wounded feminine and wounded masculine, like the wounded feminine controlling manipulative and the wounded masculine inflexible and workaholic. So you definitely want to make sure that you're doing things to balance both of your inner polarities. But other than that, that's pretty much all that comes up with you. And I think it's because you're so f- focused on like creating a dream life that like you just don't have time to be in your wounded. Mind you, that will come after you've done your healing, of course. But interestingly enough, let's talk about relationships. In relationships, you can kind of come off as impersonal, 22, like not going to lie. And I feel like that's because you're just so focused on creating a better world and like materially manifesting your life. And that's the thing. You tend to be more focused on your dreams and your relationship. So it's important that you have steady and emotionally supportive partners who are going to support your dreams and like kind of enjoy you going through your process. You do value traditional relationships. So you will 100% respect the institution of marriage and you want marriage. You also have a strong need for steady relationships. So like short flings and like casual relationships aren't really your vibe. You want to feel safe and secure with a partner because you want to be able to provide for them. You're very loyal and you just, you want a relationship that's going to stand the test of time. Now, in terms of who you're most compatible with, it's going to be fours, sixes, sevens, eights, and nines. And I feel like those are very, very complimentary, especially like a seven, a seven and an eight, I feel like is just a vibe. I feel like a life path four, you'll teach a lot to a life path four. And that is you, 22. And last but not least, we have life path number 33. 33, your archetype is the master healer, which again, same thing as the master number. So the first thing about the qualities you have, 33, is that your life path number is extremely rare. So if you're listening to this and you have a life path 33, I need to know. Like I literally, for research purposes, need to know. (laughs) Obviously, I don't need to. You don't have to tell me if you don't want to, but I would love to know because it's extremely rare. I've never met anyone with it. So I'm not just saying it's rare because I've never met someone with it. I'm just saying it's statistically very, very rare. So please let me know. But 33, you value honesty and integrity and you do all you can to bring those energies into this world. You're here to guide others, to learn and to practice the, the principles of purity and integrity in this lifetime. You have an incredible amount of potential, but you may not manifest or actualize your gifts until midlife. You may be caught up kind of having a more human experience for half your life and then living your like master healer kind of energy experience later in life. You're very artistically creative. You're compassionate, you're sensitive, and you're responsible. In terms of where your ego expression or your wounded ego expression might rise up and need improvement is being a perfectionist, being controlling, having very, very high moral standards, which by all means is fine. I don't exactly see that as a problem, but you can't expect people to like be a version of themselves that they're not ready to be, right? And you have to be careful not to sacrifice yourself for other people. You really got to put yourself first. It's okay to be a healer. It's okay to be a teacher. It's a beautiful thing. You've really got to be those things for yourself too, right? We talked about that with another number. I can't remember which one, but you really got to put yourself first and not like lose yourself in your role. In terms of relationships, you're really similar to a six, which is probably why you're most compatible with them, but you have a need to nurture. You like, you really, you want to provide, you want to nurture, you want to love, you want to teach, you want to grow with someone. And this also causes you to seek marriage earlier on in life, which is not a bad thing. You're also someone who is natural, desire like you're born with a natural desire to be a parent and that's likely because you want to teach other humans how to live their best life and how to be good humans right you're most compatible interestingly enough with um life path numbers three six and nine and the reason i say interestingly enough is because three six nine is like a nine numbers are like the the numerical completion right and three is completion in numerology it's why we have nine numbers three six nine three times three is nine and then we have 33 which three and three is six three times three is nine three plus three is six it's just interesting anyway I'm going off on a bit of like a mathematical nerd tangent here but 
those are who you're going to be most compatible with. In terms of your career, you're going to have a probably spiritual career. You're the most spiritually of all of all the numbers. So you're a spiritual teacher. So your strong desire to help and teach and be of service will often come through some sort of spiritual practice. You want to support the underdog. You want to support people who are really trying to get through in this life and to become better versions of themselves. So ideal careers would be counseling, education, charity work, and any sort of healing profession. Usually it's holistic healing with you. And if you pursue arts or business, then you need to make sure that you're spending enough time on your career to see success from them. As where the other endeavors might come very easily to see success from, arts and business are something that you're going to have to put a little bit more grit and work into. So just keep that in mind. And that is Life Path. 33, the final one in all of them. So I hope that you guys enjoyed that. It was definitely a like research heavy topic. And I think it's super interesting to do that once in a while and to share with you guys things that I've learned. It was honestly really fun to research too. I'm not going to lie. And I think it's interesting getting to know these different parts of your makeup, right? Like I said, human design, your astrological soul contract. Well, it's your soul contract. It's not just astrological, but it's read astrologically. Anyways, and your numeric makeup are all these like it's like putting a puzzle together right it's like you come here on earth you have this soul amnesia you can't remember who you are at first takes lifetimes to remember and to awaken and to like do the whole spiel of the human experience and being a soul here and then being a guide here and working up to those things but whenever you have all these different pieces to the puzzle you can more better understand yourself and how to work with your energy and direct yourself into your highest alignment your soul's path and soul's trajectory so I hope that you enjoyed this episode I know I've talked quite a bit about the soul contract reading so I will leave my link below if you would like to book that reading with me it's your entire soul's contract for this incarnation the karmic lessons you have to learn, the cycles you need to break, the new cycles that your soul wants you to start, your dream career, how to be more productive, what your core personality is like and how it's different from your sun sign, which is the only sign people seem to know in astrology right now. So we're going to talk about all those things in the soul contract reading. So if you want that, the link is below and you can use the discount code to get money off. I believe it's 15% off the purchase. So feel free for that. And if you're listening to this and you're wondering how we can work together more intensively one-to-one, I am opening up a few spots for my September season of one-to-one coaching. So if you would like to book a discovery call and see if we're a good fit for each other, if I can help you get to where you want to be through my methodology, then the link is below. You can book that. A little bit about that, I have programs, three different one-to-one programs that help you to heal, expand, and awaken and manifest your dream life. I've seen so much success in the dozens and dozens of clients that I have seen successfully complete my programs and graduate. There is a lot of emotional healing. We're going to break through deep wounds, reprogram those limiting beliefs, get you into alignment with your soul. You're going to get to know your ego, your inner child, your higher self, and really transform into the best version of yourself that you've always wanted to be but maybe felt too afraid to be and so we're going to really work on confidence building empowerment and deep inner connection i bring you through the entire process of self-actualization which spiritually is known as the kundalini awakening so you're going to completely go through your awakening so if you've been feeling that and you want support with it then i'm your girl it's literally what i specialize in in this lifetime all things kundalini And yeah, there's a lot that comes with it. I do a lot of subconscious reprogramming in the 12 weeks that I work with you. So if you want that, the link for the discovery call is below. I'll also link like more information so you can go and read on my website what it's all about. And yeah, looking forward to meeting with any of you who want to potentially work together. But all in all, you guys, that is the episode. It's a long one. My voice hurts. I've got more recordings to do today too so i will see you guys in the next episode and go be your divine self i love you you got this
Thank you.